In this video, you will learn how to draw realistic fur. I will be using a reference photo of this dog and show you how I draw the fur in different parts of the dog since, you know, the fur looks different around the nose compared to the ears, for instance. And you absolutely don't need to use the same reference photo because by watching this video, you should be able to learn the principles of drawing fur so that you can use any reference photo you want. So yeah, let's get started with the video. If you're drawing a dog with light colored fur like this golden retriever that I'm drawing, I recommend that you first create a background. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. Just adding a bit of shadow with your pencil is enough. So I'm just drawing lightly with a 6B pencil where I want the background to be. And then I blend it out with some tissue paper and a Q-tip near the edges. And regardless if you're drawing an animal with light or dark fur, the fur will likely look darker in certain places due to the shadows. And in those places, I always think it's good to start off by making a soft foundation because this will save your time but also give a more realistic impression at the end. So here I'm using a dirty q-tip, meaning that I have been using it for drawing before. And if you don't have a dirty one, just draw the foundation like I drew the background in the previous step to create a smooth foundation. Next, it's time to draw the actual fur. Here I'm using a 0.5mm mechanical pencil and I'm basically just making these short pencil strokes since the fur is short in this part of the dog that I'm drawing. For the most part, I don't draw the strokes back and forth. I make one stroke and lift the pencil at the end to mimic a real fur since it gives off a more soft impression rather than a blunt pencil stroke. Also, you really want to look at your reference photo and see in which directions the fur is going because it usually doesn't always go in the same direction. And in places where you're drawing a short fur, the strokes may be straighter, unless maybe you're drawing a poodle or something. Conversely, where you're drawing a long fur, the strokes will be more curved, as you will see later. It's also a good idea to start light and create darker shadows later on. I only put more pressure with the pencil in places where I see that the fur is much darker, as you can see me doing here. And you can also see that I'm using the same pencil here, but to create more dimension, you want to use different pencils, but you will see me doing that later on. And the reason why I'm using the same pencil first and only applying more pressure to create dimension is because this prevents that you accidentally make the drawing more dark than it should be because it's easier to add more to your drawing than it is to erase. And here I'm using an 8B pencil just to create more shadows and dimension as I've talked about. And of course you can use a 6B or a 4B, whatever you have on hand, as long as it's darker than an HB. Uh, because yeah, the mechanical pencil that I used, it was an HB, I forgot to mention, but usually most mechanical pencils are uh, HB. Uh, pencils so yeah and also you want to make sure that the tip of your pencil is really sharp because since you're drawing fur that makes it look a lot better and I know the tip of my pencil here isn't that sharp but it still works and here you can see that the pencil strokes in this part of the drawing are going in a lot of different directions and they are even shorter than the strokes I drew around the mouth so again, you want to look at your reference photo and see in which directions you should draw the strokes. And wherever I want the fur to be lighter, I just make sure to draw all of the strokes further apart. As you can see here, I'm starting to make slightly longer strokes and they are just slightly curved. Um, yeah, so they're not perfectly straight, but they have just a little curve to them and I'm still drawing them further apart and 
Also, I'm putting a little bit more pressure with the pencil here because I want to create more contrast because that's what I saw in the reference photo. So when you look at your reference photo, if you see darker areas, you should just create it more dark in those areas. And if it's lighter in one area, yeah, create it lighter. Um, so basically you draw what you see. I also like to take the tissue paper and blend everything out, but not in a way that I erase everything that I've just drawn. I just put very light pressure so I can make everything look softer and less harsh. Then I continue adding more layers by creating more strokes and using the different pencils so that it will create depth and give some life to the drawing and here I'm just going to show you on the side how I'm making the strokes so as I said I lift the pencil at the end but I also go pretty quick to save time because it will be quite boring to just draw individual strokes very slowly and in this part of the drawing you can also see what I mean when I say that the fur goes into different directions so you need to draw the fur in different directions basically and as there is a lot of contrast going on in my reference photo I really make some really dark uh, strokes kind of or places here but if your reference photo don't have this much contrast then obviously you don't want to do this you just want to create very soft strokes and maybe not so much contrast and when i move on to another part of the drawing i create a new foundation by drawing a bit like this and then i will blend it out here I am using a sharp object designed for arts and crafts to carefully carve out the whiskers. You can also do this to create thin and light strokes in the fur. However, I realized that this method didn't work so well on this paper. I've usually used this method on thicker paper, so just keep in mind that it might work better on a thicker paper. And it's probably good to test it out on another paper first so that you don't mess up your drawing like I did a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can also uh, use... A very sharp eraser or a kneaded eraser and just erase out some lighter whiskers or lighter fur but if you decide to use a sharp object to carve it out I would recommend you to do it uh, as a last step uh, so you don't want to do it when you still have a lot of things to draw because yeah that could potentially mess up the drawing i always do this as the last step maybe i can just correct some things afterwards but yeah usually you want to do it as the last step and here i'm using the exact same principle as i've done previously but i'm using a 0 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil and i'm just doing it as a preference of mine if you don't have a 0 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil it's totally fine it's basically just a very fine tipped mechanical pencil so it's great for drawing details especially when you want to draw hair or fur in this case so yeah i'm just drawing it very carefully and i want to use this pencil in particular just because I somehow found it easier when I want to draw uh, lighter parts of the fur. In this area where the fur is a bit lighter I may not go in with a different pencil to create more contrast and depth. I may just stay with the, this pencil but apply more pressure to make it look slightly darker 
But you can of course go in with another pencil. I just think this is nice because it prevents me from making it too dark. So in this part of the dog, the fur is longer, so naturally I draw longer strokes and they are also slightly more curved, as you can see. And in some places where the fur is longer, you may find that the hair is more in, I don't know how to describe it, clusters almost. Uh, clusters is such an ugly word, especially when you want to describe this, but I can't think of a better word right now. Maybe in sections, I don't know. Um, but yes, so I just draw like this, as you can see on the screen. And I'm just using the exact same techniques and principles as I have described previously. But I'm just drawing everything more clumped together. And here I'm using a pencil eraser to create some lighter strokes that go into the background that we drew in the beginning. And this will just make a more realistic effect because you will see uh, those lighter kind of hair strands going into, the, not going into the background, but they have the background behind them. And Again, in some cases you can also use a sharp tool if the paper works well with that. And just a little reminder that it can be nice to blend out what you have drawn a little bit, but not so much that you erase everything that you've done, of course. And you can use a Q-tip for those uh, smaller areas when you don't want to blend out too much. And if you really have a lot of contrast in your reference photo or if you're drawing a darker fur, you may find that an actual pen works better in some cases than because I found that the 8B pencil just wasn't dark enough. So I wanted to add more contrast. So yeah, I used this very fine tipped um, black pen. You can also use a black colored pencil. I am also using this pencil eraser to create lighter fur in the actual fur opposed to on top of the background as I did uh, just a couple of minutes ago. And you can also use a kneaded eraser for this or a really sharp regular eraser. Then in places where the fur is a lot darker, I would really recommend you to draw a bit, then you blend it out a little bit without erasing it, of course, as I said before, and then you draw a little bit more, and then maybe you use the pencil eraser a little bit as well, um, because this would just create a lot of layers, and when we build up layers, it will help make everything look more realistic. In terms of the reference photo that I'm using, the fur on the ear looks different from the fur on the face. So on the ear, the fur is longer and fluffier. So basically, I would use the same techniques that I've already taught you. Make longer strokes and draw them in whatever direction they are going in your reference photo. I also want to mention that when you draw fur or hair, you don't really have to make it a mission to make it look exactly as in the picture because that can be really difficult. And I mean, you can, of course, do it. But to me, I would require so much patience to do that. And I don't have that. So, uh, yeah, I just look at my picture and I try to make it look as similar as possible. It may not be that every sing single strand of hair goes in the exact same direction as in the picture and so on, but I try to make it look as similar as possible.
And here I just want to show you what you can do when the fur is a lot darker because in this part of the picture the fur was a lot darker so I make an even darker foundation to begin with because it just saves time to be honest. And yeah then I just continue to draw on top of that. And in the end you may find places you want to adjust for instance i found that the contrast on the ear was just too much so i slightly blended it out with my tissue paper and then i just go back and add back a little bit more contrast just to not uh, have it too soft and before I wrap this video up, I just want to show you how I drew the fur on top of the head because the light really hit this part of the head. So the fur is very light here. So I actually didn't add so much with the pencil. I focused mostly on, well, first of all, I had the background and then I mostly used my pencil eraser to add the fur. Uh, so not so much with the regular pencil, focusing more on drawing the fur with the pencil eraser. And sometimes I get questions about whenever I use different tools. Uh, so when you see me brushing with this thing right here, it's just a pencil eraser, another one that was not very good quality, but it has a brush on the back. And uh, yeah, I don't have anything on that brush. I just use it to brush away, uh, you know, those things that um, come when you erase things, those little crumbles. And in the end, you just want to look at your drawing and see if you need to add highlights or shadows anywhere. Then you are pretty much done. So that is it for this video. If it was helpful for you, please leave a like so that more people can find it and learn how to draw fur. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you see when I upload more tutorials. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.